In this video, we are going to learn about graphs in TensorFlow. So these are the topics we'll be covering. And if the video gets too long, I'll try to cut it into maybe three or four parts. Here are the references. So there's only one reference, TensorFlow guidebook. And we'll be drawing heavily from this. And in fact, the code is also copied from this. And the reason for that is uh, some of the examples are really uh, well to explain the concept and also I've kept them as is. Now, before we dive, in, dive into what is a graph, I just want to mention the terminologies eager versus graph execution in TensorFlow. So what eager execution means is execution of a Python code without the use of graph that TensorFlow makes. So that's simple. And for graph execution, it's the computations that are done using a graph. So that's the graph execution. So for example, let's say if you created a function to add two scale two numbers uh, in Python and you run it as is by calling the Python function, then it would be an eager execution. However, if you pass that function to a tf dot function in TensorFlow, then it creates a graph. Now, if you call that graph to run your two numbers to get the values in return, to get the added values back, then that would be a graph execution because you are using a graph in that case. So let's look at a graph before we uh, look at this slide. So here is a graph. And in this graph, uh, we are trying to visualize a two layer neural network, as we can see. So what a graph consists of are two things. One is these nodes that we see here. And the other item, so these are the nodes. And the next thing we see are the edges. So these are called the edges. And graph theory is a big topic we won't be going into details of that beyond this uh, this particular diagram but the values can flow from one node to another node so here we see that the values are flowing only in one direction and uh, the operations such as addition calculation of a dot product those are happening all at uh, these nodes such as this node, we are having addition. This node is performing the task of um, a dot product. And these are the scalar values that are being passed to between these two nodes. One is right here and the other one is right here. So now if we go back to the slide before, we can see that a graph consists primarily of two things. One is the tf dot operations that is the actual task that is being performed at each node which could be an addition subtraction dot product etc and the second part is the objects that are being passed between two nodes and those would be values that are in a tensor so a tensor object would be a unit of data that is passed between the nodes to uh, help complete an operation so that's what a graph consists of now let's look at let's move on and look at and um, benefits of graph so here as you can see because the way TensorFlow works is you have, if you have, you write a function, what TensorFlow does is it creates a graph with that function. Uh, so graph tells TensorFlow how the information flows. And so this is your result out, this is your input. So it creates a graph. And then when you're trying to use that function so when you try to use that function you are actually using this graph so the inputs to the function are the inputs to this graph they would go through this particular graph and give the output so if 
if there is a need to run the same function again with the same data type, same input size, then it will run the same graph. And so the computations can be faster. And additionally, these uh, graphs can run in parallel. And so again, uh, that could help in expediting the process to run the code. And uh, they, are, they run efficiently on multiple devices. Furthermore, with, in case of graphs, they can be used on uh, environments where th there is no Python, such as if you are on a mobile device you're using Android, then there is TensorFlow Lite. There are other embedded devices, maybe backend servers where that can be used. And graphs can be easily optimized. So I'm guessing here what it means is uh, it's probably easier to tune the parameters to in case of graphs to make the graphs run faster. While this is the case, it's also important to remember that there would still be some functions or some part of your code that would have to be in Python. So that's something to remember. Now let's look at what we are going to do in the coding part. So here are three libraries, and in this video, I'm I've put all the code on right on the slides in front of you. So if you uh, feel that this is you understand this type of explanation better, please let me know. Or if you are if you prefer the previous way where I'm actually typing the code, and uh, you are maybe typing along with me when the code is being written. If you prefer that way, please let me know. I'm trying to guess which would be a better way to explain the code. So here, in this case, we are importing primarily this library, TensorFlow, and uh, there are other libraries also, TimeIt and DateTime, but this is the one that we are going to be primarily using. So here is the first case where what we have is a function, uh, which is the tf dot function, and here we have a function that is written in Python. The function takes in three arguments x, y, b, and it returns x. Now here down below we are creating three input values x1, y1, b1, these are the tensors. Now, if we were to run this as a eager execution or in Python, what we would we can do is call the function, such as here. So we call the function and we input the values for x1, y1, and b1 and run this. So this would work and we'll get the output. Alternative way would be to create a graph and to create a graph what we can do is take this function right here and pass this function to a tf dot function so this function creates a graph that's stored in this variable right here so when we want to perform a calculation that's within this function what we need to do then is call uh, submit the inputs to this graph. So this is the graph that we have created. And here we input the values x1, y1, and b1. So with this then, we are using the graph in TensorFlow to perform the calculation. So that's the basic usage of tf dot function. Here we have a case where the tf dot function works on nested functions. We have an outer function called outer underscore function that calls inner underscore underscore function that's up above here. And we have a tensorflow decorator here, which is at tf dot function. What this line of code does is it converts the two functions, this function and then functions inside this into a graph so when we call outer function we are working on a graph that includes both the outer function as well as the inner function so then 
when we are using TensorFlow, when we are converting Python code into TensorFlow graph, there uh, the code is a mixture of both Python and TensorFlow. So there would be instances where you'll have to use pure Python when creating this, building this function, such as if then else statements, and we'll see an example of that. And then the bridge between such Python functions and the TensorFlow graph using the tf dot function is this library called autograph. It does the work of converting the Python code into TensorFlow graph. Now let's look at how we can create a graph using Python functions and then how look at how the branches of graphs are created. So here we have a function simple ray loop and this uses the Python part which is if statement and here if tf dot greater so if it's if x is greater than zero then we return x else the function returns zero. Now we convert this function to a graph by inputting it to tf dot function then we have the output graph stored in tf underscore simple underscore ReLU. Now when we pass the arguments tf dot constant one so that is to say we pass a number one to this function what it does is it runs the graph it runs through the graph and in the graph this is the condition that is worked on so if in this case one is greater than zero so this part of the if statement gets executed and therefore a branch is created with this part now if that same function is called again with a second value this again is an integer however because this is going to execute the other part of the if statement which is else it creates another branch within the graph so that's the takeaway point is that uh, branching in graphs can be created or are created based on these if else statements or other functionalities within Python that are used in the function. And here these are two lines of code that can be used to look at how the graph looks like. This is not a, a pictorial representation, but uh, you'll get lines of codes that you can see. Uh, we won't be going into details of this right now, but if you have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Now let's look at polymorphism. One function, many graphs. So the idea here is that when we create a function in Python, depending upon the data type and the shape of the input, a graph is created. Let's say if the input is integer rank 1 tensor and the second input is integer rank 2 tensor, then because the shapes are different, that is the input signatures are different, it will create a new graph. And all these graphs are within the concrete function in TensorFlow. Here we have an example for this. We are creating a function myRelu in Python and then this function is decorated by at tf dot function. What that does is it creates converts this function into a graph. Now what we are gonna do is input different types of uh, input values to this function and what that will do is it will create different um, it will create different graphs. For example, when we input tf or constant 1.0, here this is a rank 0 tensor of data type float. And so that will create a different graph. The second one in case of B, we have tf dot constant 1 minus 1. This is data type is integer and it's a rank 1 tensor. And so that's that will create another graph. And in the C case, we have one rank one tensor with 3.0 uh, 
that is float data type so that will create a third graph now after this is if we run these lines a b and c later on when we run a1 and b1 this is not going to create a new graph because it is it has already been created for these input types we have rank 0 tensor and we which is data type float this is similar to a input that we had earlier so this code will use the graph that was created for a now in case of b1 again this is rank 1 tensor with data type float which is same as c so this would use the same graph that was created for c up above 